Hey guys, sorry this uh, took a little while putting together. Uh, this is definitely going to be a little bit longer of a video to show you guys what I've done. Uh, but today we are solely going to talk about the light bar that I've installed on here. So once again I'm doing this at night uh, so that I can then show you guys uh, the final product and you can actually see what it's like at nighttime. Um, so first off, uh, this is a 38 inch um, slim LED light bar that works on 12 volt and 24 volt. Uh, with it being slim, there's only one row of LED lights instead of the uh, what you're com you commonly see on the top of trucks and Jeeps where it's a uh, it has two rows of LEDs and this has you can kind of see it in this picture starting from here going to the end you can see how uh, everything looks a little different once you get to this point that is because these have uh, flood cones on them so they reflect refract the light a lot more to create a flooding effect and then it has the middle section are more for beams so they have a nice smooth cone and then the same thing on this side here those are more flooding LEDs so you get a beam effect down the middle and then flood to the left and to the right and let's see if I can show you this I have the wire running uh, let's see there we go up around and it comes through the upright down through the body and then the right up here the black and white wire run into the center console which I'll open up in a minute uh, where I connected it all up uh, quick side note I found golf balls that match the golf cart paint job almost exactly so I figured I'd stick those in there and I'll probably get another set of three uh, you know just to keep the comicalness of you know about this golf cart that you kind of forget that it is a golf cart with all the upgrades, so I thought it was a nice little touch, but uh, something fun to do. All right, so mounting the light bar. Uh, on a Yamaha drive, uh, from pole upright to upright, left and right, is 38 and a half inches. Um, oh, sorry. 38 and a half inches. Uh, so when you put this light bar up here, uh, let me show you what the, they account for, this is a 38 inch light bar. They account for this, uh, little bolt that it has a self tapping nut on the bar itself from the outside of this bolt to the other side on the outside of that bolt is 38 inches. So when you hold it up to the up upright, it's nice and flush back to back from the face of the bolt to the upright it's flush so uh, that made it a little interesting for mounting using the traditional L brackets that um, actually let me see if I can would normally you would you would bolt to the side and then this part you could normally bolt to whatever you want but I found that part of the canopy here has the support fin and um, it fit perfectly uh, when I uh, bolted it to this. So instead of actually using the L brackets in an L form, you know, uh, shape or format, and bolting onto the metal, um, I took the L brackets and actually bent them out flat, and then uh, was able to mount it up to here. Now, since this video has been oh when you see this video since then when I mounted this these I've run aligned uh, so they won't actually have this surface rust I end up uh, sanding them nice and clean bare metal and then using rhino liner to seal them so they don't rust and um, there was a bit of a clearance issue sorry guys at night with my little setup here it's a little difficult to do this without it's hard to be a professional uh, so when I try to use the L brackets on here, thinking I could just use the flat piece of metal to mount to the outside of this, the back part of this LED bar, which the cooling fins would hit this, so it would actually be pointing 
more down this way instead of out. And um, I just kind of played around, measured uh, where I needed to do to make sure that these are matched on either side, and uh, which makes this light bar level. And I explained it in another video, but the reason I didn't want to mount it on the top of the canopy is, oh yeah, it was with the flag pole when I made that, is when you come into a garage, you don't want to drive into some place that might actually might accidentally, you know, shear it off the top. So that just creates a bigger problem. So that's why I wanted to mount it underneath, and it took me a little while to figure out how I was going to do this. Uh, so 38 inch light bar, 12 to 24 volts, slim LED. Um, mounted it up to the canopy on the fins, just kind of giving a, a recap here before I move on. And then I picked up the canopy to drill a hole. Let's see if I can show you guys. Yeah, I can. Uh, so I drilled a hole in there and then ran the two wires, just the positive and negative, down the upright, up underneath the into the console. So give me a second and I will open up the console and show you guys how I wired it into the system. All right, now that I got the uh, console open, so we're in the golf cart. This is normally where your cup holders would go. And let me remind you that this wiring harness that I'm going to be talking about and working with is a uh, I'm pretty sure it's a Magjax harness, if I remember correctly. It's been a while, but Magjax harness, I explained this uh, when I was doing a, a previous video with just the headlights, but um, the, the headlight kit itself came with the turn signal bar. You know, you got your left and right. Your horn is on the end. Please focus, come on. The horn is on the end, but you also have a twist auxiliary switch um, which to me seemed a little funny that they would add that there and initially I thought that it didn't connect to anything I, I thought that was kind of a waste of a waste of opportunity right there so uh, fast forward a little bit and I started looking into the wiring harness that runs up to um, the switches here with your uh, your normal headlight switch and then your hazard switch and I this is a lot better view of how I have them set up from uh, the, the last time I talked about this. So, uh, let me show you, make sure you have your reference here. The front of the golf cart is this way. We're looking into the cup holder area. This is your ignition. This right here is your engine light, um, low oil, uh, light. I just have it unplugged for now. I don't remember why, but, um, this is all factory so we're not we're not going to be touching this and we're not going to be touching let's make sure I can show this to you guys we're not going to be touching the uh, low oil light this wire or this loom you can see it's a, a shinier black and this loom here is the aftermarket uh, headlight kit this runs to the headlights which is this switch here and this other loom runs underneath the uh, low engine low oil engine light to the hazards here so when I originally installed this they had this purple wire coming off the loom that runs to the hazards light and it had a quick little uh, butt connector on it and I thought that was kind of funny just having an exposed wire there and I decided to grab a multimeter and because the golf cart is not grounded to the body and then back to the battery everything is connected to the positive and the negative on the battery hook the multimeter up to this and touch the negative side of the battery had no electricity so then I turned the switch on the um, turn signal, turned it to on, touched it here and back to the negative again and it showed that I had 12 volts right here. So that confirmed for, for me and on this wiring harness that this was the auxiliary power to that turn switch on the uh, turn signals. So 
that's when I started uh, looking at doing a light bar for this. Uh, let me just be clear here. This solenoid and these two over here are all with the turn signals and hazard lights with the kit. So those are sitting in here. Um, this was one that I added and I found out that I created a constant draw on the battery. So I end up eliminating this from the I end up taking all this out. I need to actually um, unhook this and 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 take out the wiring, but I have a bunch of it's zip tied, so I just haven't done that for this video. So um, ignore this. Don't worry about this solenoid. So uh, kept poking around with my multimeter and found one that we have power here, but I needed a negative. Um, you could run a a uh, a separate cable, separate wire all by itself down through the golf cart back to the negative side of the battery and hook it up to your light bar and then the positive side of the light bar to your auxiliary power here. Um, that's where I just tried to use the solenoid but found that it, it just it drained the battery overnight. It had a constant draw on it so that's why I eliminated this. Now I'm just saying this your setup is different you're gonna have to look at your wiring kit um, it you know if it's not exactly like this then you might have to come up with something or research uh, and see if there's a way to introduce a, a switch or if they have a um, just a switch that isn't tied to anything and see how you could utilize it but for me it was it, it was nicely presented they had a, po a positive here and I could just run a negative back to the battery so uh, look over your system, take your time, use a multimeter, um, don't assume that you know you could just hook up to any positive and any, any negative. Um, you might hurt system, you might melt wires, that's not good. So uh, what you're seeing here is the white wire going to the purple is the positive side of the LED light bar and the negative is this black wire that runs down see how do I have this set up so uh, sorry I just had to remember how I did this uh, this is the negative side of the LED light bar Ow, stupid mosquitoes the negative side of the LED light bar which then touches the headlight switch here and I used the multimeter and found that the black wire that was coming off the switch was a ground solely used, not for the headlights, but for that blue LED bulb right there. That's all the ground was used for. It wasn't a positive, it was a negative. So if I unplug that negative, this light bulb wouldn't turn on, but the headlights still would. So uh, playing with the multimeter, checking things over, that is all that ground was tied to was this LED bulb. So. I tied it into that negative, which I then uh, used a fuse, which, uh, forgive me, I don't remember what size fuse this was. It, it, um, it was a recommended fuse size for this type of LED bar, so this was a little kit that, you know, I think it's two inches on either side of wire. Uh, so I, I put that in there as a fail safe so that if something happens it would burn this out instead of melting the, the wiring harness all together and then it travels my, uh, mind you we're talking about the negative here it travels back down the light uh, the, the wiring harness for the headlights back to the battery so just a recap positive purple to the positive side of the LED light bar and then to the negative in the wiring harness with a fuse, inline fuse, so that nothing happens. So that is what I've done here in this compartment. Uh, if you don't have an auxiliary power or a place for um, uh, a negative, if, if you don't have this or you don't want to install something like this, you can just run a positive and negative from the battery and just put a switch just a little you know flip switch 
anywhere on the golf cart that you want. So you, you don't have to do this. You can, you can introduce a, a whole separate circuit for your light bar. That, you know, that may be the route that you want to go. Some of y'all might be electricians. You might say that's the only way to go for something like this. I don't know. But this works for me. And I did more testing to make sure that the draw from the light bar would not melt this system. So I was looking at... Uh, uh, I was looking at readouts from uh, I think it's like amperage and wattage and voltage and I was also I had um, one of those little uh, thermal uh, th uh, those little laser thermometers that you just point at something pull the trigger and it tells you how hot it is I was watching the temperature throughout this wiring harness as the light was staying on and I left it on for a considerable amount of time to make sure that it wouldn't heat up and melt the wires that's you do not want that so I was really cautious with this but when it said it worked off of a 12 and 24 volt system and the wire was you know this gauge I don't know what it is but it, it's not heavy gauge at all it's very similar to what the, the LED light LED headlight wiring loom is I for me don't don't take this as you know don't take this to the bank but for me I assume that we would probably be okay just directly tying it in. So far, I haven't had any problems, but don't assume that that'll, that'll just work for your system because I did it. Take your time, you know, do your research, do it right. You don't want to melt this, it's just a headache. And it could cause a fire, so that's not fun for anybody. All right, so uh, with that being said, Turn this off with that being said give me a second I'm gonna set it up so you can see how bright the headlights are from the golf cart uh, in comparison to this light bar and holy cow uh, it's it's almost offensive on how bright it is it, it it'll make you squinting and want to turn away it's so bright so give me just a minute all right I know this is uh, very dim lit. This is how I want it to be so I can show you guys how bright that this is. Um, I've parked my truck in front here. Um, I know it's not going to show distance, but this light bar will blast their house full of light. So I'm not going to have this on for long. I'm not trying to piss off the neighbors at all. So um, it's going to be quick, but I can at least show you guys. So let me turn on just the headlights first. Let me back up so you guys can see this. There we go. All right. The headlights, the LED headlights themselves, I've, I know I've showed it in a previous video. They are bright as is. Very bright. So you can see it lights up the front of the truck. Just notice. Let me, uh, let me show you. Turn it off again. Notice how the front of the the front of the truck, just how you can't see the rear view mirror, you can't see the grab handles in the truck. You just kind of look out and around. So the, the headlights themselves are decently bright. You can see that it lights up in the truck here. So uh, the headlights cast a lot of sharp light out there. They're plenty bright. Now, I feel bad for the neighbors. Look how it lights up their house. I, I'm not going to have this on for long, but my goodness is this thing bright. Just the truck is just lit up. You can see all the way into the back of the cab. You can plainly see their house. It's stupid bright. It's like I said, it's almost offensive to be in front of this thing. If you, if you walk out in front of it and it's on and you turn up towards it, your eyes instantly squint. You want to look away from it. There's just... <laughs> It makes me giggle on how bright this light bar is for how small it is. I know I'm I know I'm looking at this is a very dim light setting right now. I have almost all the lights turned off in the area. But my gosh, is that thing bright. So finally got that installed. Uh, I got one more thing to show you. Um, that will be another video. Hold on one second. All right. So this is honestly what took me so long to do this and um, took me a while to film this. 
Because the light bar is mounted, please focus. The mount, the, the light bar is mounted close to the bar in line here and it sits just below right here on the canopy. When you flip up the, the, the windscreen, it barely clears in front of the canopy here by design, but it hits the light bar and I can't, you can't get that around. It's, it doesn't work. So what I'm planning to do, and this is the part I've, I've had to do some research on, I am going to um, show you guys how I'm going to cut this plexiglass to clear the light bar. And it's roughly about here. So where this little cutout is for this rubber uh, retainer, it's just above here. So uh, the next, or a video coming up, I'll show you how I cut this so that it will clear the light bar. Still keep, let's say you're driving and it's raining, it'll still keep water from going up over and hitting you in the face. So um, that is a, I knew going into this that this was gonna be an issue, so I knew I was gonna have to do something about it. But uh, I'm gonna give this a test run cut on this to practice. But then because it's broken, it's got some uh, some tape on there I can't get off. Um, I know it's, yeah, a big giant crack here. A big chunk of it missing here. I'm going to test it on this plexiglass. And then I'm going to probably, no, I know I'm going to buy a um, tinted, smoked, brand new windscreen to put on here. And that will finish up the look because everything looks really good on this except the windscreen. So... Um, just if you're going to mount a light bar and you, and you're going to mount it underneath the canopy, which I suggest you're going to have to cut the plexiglass. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I don't have any special tools or, you know, anything crazy that would make, you know, it's super easy. That is unattainable for other people. I'm going to do it in a way that just about anybody could do it and try and do it correctly. So it looks good. Um, not trying to do a shoddy job here. So this is the, uh, the known issue and the, the struggle that I was having with where do I mount this. So picks where I was going to mount it. The, a later video will be showing how I cut this. And guys, the light bar is awesome. I really think that that is the way to go. If you didn't want to spend the money on the headlights, oh, I didn't even tell you how much that cost. Uh, I got it on eBay and I had some eBay bucks. I got it for 18 bucks, 18 bucks for that thing. Um, yeah, it's made in China and, and it's waterproof and shockproof and all this, that, and the other, but I, you can't beat it for 18 bucks. Not when I'm, you know, not trying to drop a ton of money on a single item on this golf cart, you know, not trying to put a $2,000 motor in here at, in one go, but you know, a little upgrade, you know, a little paint, some stickers, um, just like the little grab handles. Those were, I forget what I said they were. I think they were like 10 bucks for the four. That was $18. If you don't want to do headlights, if you just are using this as a, uh, a yard cart, which we were using it the other day to do some yard work around the house, uh, moving mulch and everything. But if if you just wanted a basic light on this thing, you can't beat a light bar. It is just absolutely insane on how much light that puts out. So, um, sorry this took so long to get out. Uh, there was a lot of thought that I had to put into it uh, to get it the way it is. And um, like I said, I learned my mistake and my learning part in this was that a uh, introducing uh, a solenoid into the system causes a constant draw on the battery and it was dead the next day. So that's what I learned from it. But I know everybody is going to have a different golf cart. Everybody's going to have a different experience and different light bar, but have fun with it. It's a great upgrade. Uh, I will definitely, I know I haven't put, put any video out of the uh, Rex open when I was driving around, but I will definitely be posting videos of us at VIR using this and showing you guys in a pitch black, no street light area using this uh, headlight and light bar 
to really see how much it puts out the distance but you guys saw it, it lit up the neighbor's house uh, it's it's the way to go if you want to put light on a golf cart but anyways you guys have a great night i'm gonna head to bed have a good one